So what does the center do? Um, the Center for Veterinary Medicine does a lot. It's one of it's the smallest center at FDA. We're just over 400 people, and um, we regulate animal drugs. Um, we also uh, make sure that animal feeds are safe, mm -hmm. which translates to human food. Mm -hmm. And we, um, we, we take care of multiple species, turtles. We regulate pet turtles. We also um, make sure that companion animals have safe and effective drugs. Mm -hmm. And we make sure that food animals have drugs that don't leave residues in human food. So when you say you regulate turtles, what does that mean? Well, years ago in the 1970s, and my vintage growing up, um, baby turtles were the pet of choice. Those are turtles with uh, shells of less than four inches. And many, many, many households, including the one I grew up in, had um, pet turtles. But pet turtles are carriers of salmonella. And so many children were getting sick. CDC estimated that up to 100,000 kids a year were getting sick with um, salmonella. So Congress said, do something, FDA. And so we passed regulations under the Public Health Service Act to regulate the sale of baby turtles. And now it's illegal to sell a baby turtle under four inches. Um, there's certain exceptions for educational purposes, but um, just everyday sale of pet turtles is outlawed. Some of the other things that's, that, uh, that the center does, uh, assuring things that, that feed is safe and, and those kinds of things, what, what are some of the big issues that, uh, that, that you face every day and have faced in the past? Well, in the past, certainly in the past few years, the biggest issue that we faced was the melamine contamination of pet food. That was, um, I think none of us were prepared as to how um, large that recall of the pet food was going to be, how concerned that consumers were going to be about their pets. We really, um, I think for the first time as an agency, recognized the importance of the human-animal bond. Um, it, FDA in a month fielded more calls from um, in their consumer complaint department than they did in normally in a year, and so it was it was very tragic. And uh, so we're working very very hard in part because Congress has asked us to pass new regulations. Congress passed a law, um, basically mandating that we have to pass regulations to ensure that pet food is has safe ingredients, mm -hmm. is labeled according um, to you know has nutrition facts, so that consumers can be assured of the safety of the what they're feeding to their cats and dogs. And what are some of the other issues? Antibiotics, I suppose, and, and, We're, and BSE and yes, all those things. bovine spongiform encephalopathy continues to be, or BSE continues to be a concern for us. Um, Final regulations were passed in October that mandate that there cannot be certain ingredients in feed fed to ruminants. Those are um, cows. So we're um, concerned about that aspect of the feed supply for, for cattle. Um, we're also, as you mentioned, antimicrobial resistance is a big concern for us. Yeah, the, the commissioner has, has, has brought together a number of a number of parts of the agency under a sort of a central food uh, rubric, yes. and uh, the Center for Veterinary Medicine is part of that. How does that how does that work, and and uh, how do you how do you interface? Well, interestingly enough, um, CVM is sort of divided into its feed component, but it, you know we also have the the um, pre-approval and post-approval of of animal drugs. And so uh, a part of the center, the part that's, that works on feed, is um, working on the food transformation initiative at, at FDA. Um, I've been to several meetings myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a very exciting initiative. Because what it does is, is it finally puts food safety um, in the forefront. I, the commissioner was speaking today. Um, to the group that had a meeting, and, and she said, you know, the president has made this a priority. And so we have made it a priority, and, and finally we're looking to work more closely with our state partners who do a lot of food safety work. They have inspectors in, in plants every single day, and the agency and the states have not really had a good way to communicate in the past. And so now, working together, we can do data sharing, and, and the vision is one where it'll be seamless. If the, if the states have a problem, they can call FDA, and we can help in whatever way we can 
to, um, to, to really address and solve the problem, but the key to the food safety transformation, I think, is becoming more a preventative agency. Historically, we've always responded mm -hmm. to, food, to food outbreaks, and we never put our efforts into preventing, and it's the prevention that's going to be so important to reducing food foodborne illness in the United States. So from the CBM pr perspective, uh, how does this prevention uh, emphasis uh, show itself? Well, we're, we're looking um, closely at how we can um, to prevent contaminants in animal feed, particularly because remember what gets fed to animals, especially food animals, ultimately gets fed to humans. So we're um, targeting that more closely. We're um, looking at a any way that we can join in the effort to prevent um, ingredients from coming into the country that are that are not safe. Um, so it, with the melamine, it was interesting, the melamine in the pet food. Mm -hmm. Melamine in pet food ultimately when the, the pet food became distressed and contaminated, it was turned into salvage, which went into hog feed. And so then we became concerned about the hogs. And, and so the, the supply chain, we, I don't think people recognize how closely tied to the supply chain the Center for Veterinary Medicine is. But just because it's gone into a pet food doesn't necessarily mean that it's completely out of the, the food supply. Small center, huge responsibility. Very huge, very huge. We like to say, I mean, we're responsible for multiple, multiple species, <laughs> including humans. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.